So for this video, I thought we'd compare Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders. So to get into this, let's start with their tax plan. Donald Trump plans on lowering taxes for the top 1% to around 25%. Right now it's around 39.5%. With all the loopholes around, they're pretty much paying around 15%. Uh, that's, that's, the, that's what most people on the top are paying in taxes. With all the loopholes, I know some corporations aren't paying any taxes at all. But Donald believes that lowering it to 25% will, by giving these people more money, they will create more jobs. And this is known as the trickle-down economic theory, theory, also known as Reaganomics. The problem with this theory is that we've been experimenting with it since the 80s. Up until then, the tax rate on the top 1%, the lowest it's been since before that time was around 70%. That was under Nixon. The highest it ever was was around 91%. That was under Eisenhower, a Republican. Nonetheless, a fucking Republican. Amazing, right? But ever since then, income inequality was extremely low. We That's where we created the middle class. And then when we started this idea of Reaganomics, oh, if we give tax cuts from the top, it will trickle down into the pockets of the middle class. It will create jobs. The problem with that is that we've been experimenting with it and not only has income inequality drastically increased, but where are the jobs? Where Where's the money gone? A tax cut across the board. So everybody's getting a tax cut. The problem with this is that the people on the top are getting way more money. They're saving so much more money than the people on the bottom. People on the bottom are getting a slight tax cut. The people on the top, they're getting a 14.5 tax reduction on average, on average. That is insane. How is that equal? And not only that, but it pretty much gets rid of the whole gradual, progressive gradual income tax where in his tax plan, there's only four brackets. There's the 0%, 10, 20, and 25. If you make $151,000, that $1,000 is going to be taxed at the same percent as somebody who's making a billion dollars. A progressive income tax would be the person who's making maybe $200,000 will pay 25%, but the people making oh anything over that margin will be paying maybe 25%, but a person who's making anything over a million might pay maybe 35%. See, that's more of a progressive, more more in-depth. His, his tax plan is really fucking basic. You could tell that a fucking four-year-old or a five-year-old, whoever, whatever age you assign this man, pretty much, uh, you could tell that he made this up himself. The problem with this is that Donald Trump plans on expanding the military. He wants to bomb ISIS to hell. What a great foreign policy idea. Yet, at the same time, cut taxes and expand social security. Donald, I understand you want to defund Planned Parenthood, but Planned Parenthood get shit. It doesn't even make 10.1% uh, of our budget. For God's sake, foreign aid doesn't even make up a percent of our budget. Now, the fact that he wants to save social security, I agree with him, but at the same time, the math does not add up. And giving more tax cuts giving the people on top more of leverage so that places people like Walmart who shift jobs away they save all this money while at the same getting saving more money from exporting and getting cheap labor they could decrease their prices more than any other small business have people who are working starvation wages where wages are flat they can't go to a small business place they can't the small businesses cannot compete with places like Walmart because Walmart's saving all this money. So what do you think the person on the bottom of the spectrum is going to do? Do you think they're going to waste their money and go to a small business store? No, they're going to save their money and start going to places like Walmart. That's why Walmart's such a huge conglomerate because income inequality, they work the system. Income inequality only benefits the top. It doesn't benefit small business. And with Trump's tax policy, that's exactly what it will do. We've, we're living it right now, people. Now, Bernie Sanders' plan. Here's the plan I like, and I, uh, I'm personally biased to Bernie, so that explains why I have a smile right now, but let's move on, all right? Whoa, holy shit, look at all this. God damn it. So let's give a basic overview. His tax plan 
it's an, <laughs> the direct opposite of Trump's. He wants to increase taxes on everybody. And let me explain this. So he plans blah, blah, blah. he plans on increasing taxes on the middle class to around around eight percent in total. He wants to increase uh, income tax to around uh, on everybody six point two percent, and also he wants to add a third tax on our direct incomes from our paychecks around two percent, two point two percent there. And in doing that, what what we have to realize is that while the top percent have a humongous amount of the income. The average amount of money that we get from them a year is a little bit more than $100 billion. It's around in that area, def depending on loopholes and all that. In retrospect, what Bernie wants to do, he wants to end the loopholes, which is going to completely explode the amount of income that we, got from, that we get from a, tax, a top 1% by billions. We're gonna be, we'd get billions of dollars more. At the same time, the majority of money the government gets from taxes is from the middle class. The middle class, whether we think it's shrinking or not, we make the economy. So when you increase taxes on the middle class, it gives way more money to the government in which they could invest in things like education, things like roads. In Bernie Sanders' case, the, these taxes would not only go to all that infrastructure rebuilding, but it would go to getting us a universal health care system. So his first thing, Medicare for all healthcare, universal healthcare. On average, the United States is paying vastly, the individual citizen of the United States is paying vastly more than any other country, any other westernized country that has social medicine. I'm paying double the amount that foreign countries like France, Germany, Denmark pay in healthcare, and it's because right now, private insurance companies have a monopoly on the system, and there's no competition. And doing th so, they could raise their prices whenever they want. Not only that, but pharmaceutical companies have, a, once again, a monopoly on the drugs. And in doing that, they can control the prices. And what this does, it drives up premium costs because the drugs are so much more expensive. Not only that, but they have a monopoly on the doctors. And <laughs> with this, they get the power to control what... They get the power to describe what medication you should take. So whether if whether or not it's the right medication, as long as doctors are getting paid, they're going to prescribe you the pills and the medication that the pharmaceutical company pays them to give you. It's almost like a mandate from the government, except for it's from pharmaceutical companies. And what Bernie wants to do is end that. He wants to say, fuck you, pharmaceutical companies. Fuck you, private insurances. We're going to have a system where there's a set price for everyone. And his idea is that the right to live, the right to have medication, the right to ha have health is a human right. Private insurances and pharmaceutical companies sh uh, should not have the ability to dictate who lives and who dies. So that's their tax plan. As you can see, Bernie's goes a little bit more in depth. Trump's more of a five-year-old four-step plan, which wastes a shitload of money. The difference with Bernie is that saving people all this money on healthcare premiums, putting more money in their pockets of the middle class, give them more of an encouragement to invest it back into the market. So when people are getting more money, instead of saving it, they're going to spend it. And it's not that overnight, small businesses are gonna explode. Oh my God, everyone's coming to my store. But over time with more money in people's pockets, eventually there will be more investment into small businesses. Like I said, it's not gonna be overnight. Um, People are going to have more money. They're going to be able to afford not to go to places like Walmart. And they're going to afford to go to places like the mom and pop shop down the street. This is basic economics. We had this system for a good 30 years. And in doing that, we created the strongest middle class the world has ever seen. And ever since then, we've been, trip, uh, we've been scraping along, trying to figure out what went wrong. But it was so obvious. It was that... We took the money from the middle class and we give it to the people on top. And instead of them investing it in the country, they went to places like China. They went to places where they actually invested in military like Germany, uh, not military, in education like Germany. They had them make the products and then cheap labor in China where they could easily assemble it. And then we, they bought it for cheaper prices. And when you invest, when you have more taxes, when you have more money going to the government, 
They invested in things like education. That's why I mentioned Germany a second ago. They invested in education. And in doing that, they created a great workforce. A workforce that actually knows how to create strong products that will sell great. That is why you look at your iPhone, a strong portion, a large portion of that iPhone is made in Germany, made in South Korea, made in Japan because they invested in their education systems and cutting taxes and squeezing the Department of Education dry is not going to change anything. Moving on to their track record. Other than Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders did not lie about David Duke, as you will see here. Condemn David Duke and say that you don't want his vote or that of other white supremacists in this election? Well, just so you understand, I don't know anything about David Duke, okay? I don't know anything about what you're even talking about with uh, white supremacy or white supremacists. When you say the party is self-destructing, what do you see as the biggest problem with the Reform Party right now? Well, you've got David Duke just joined. A bigot, a racist, a problem. I mean, this is not exactly the people you want in your party. Now, a large number of Trump supporters are in support of him because he says it like it is. He says the truth. You can ask a question, does he? Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. I only decided to do two clips because holy shit, this took long. It took like, this video was around... 12 minutes, 13 minutes long, and it's only two factors. If I did everything, it would be a good hour, hour and a half. And I don't think you guys would want to wait that long. So, only going to do these two. I might do more in the future. Put in the comments below what you guys think. Remember to like the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.